Rafael Pinarraj. He comes from, from Inria in Paris. In reality, is Paris Saclay. Uh, he, is, uh, he belongs to the group of Frédéric Chazal. Some of you might have known already because he was here some time ago. So he's, a, he's a, Rafael is a distinguished member of this team, which is the best team in the world doing topological data analysis. So uh, he will offer this course to us. <clears throat> Please, uh, Rafael, go ahead. Thank you very much, Cesar. Boat um, RG, Prezadush Estudiantish. Welcome to the first class of uh, topological data analysis. Um, so I would like to start with a short introduction so that we will all be on the same page. Up. So my name is um, Raphael. You can call me uh, Raphael or Raphael or Rafa. Um, I come from France and I came here in, in Rio uh, to work in EMAP. And uh, the beginning of my mission starts with uh, a course, the summer course about uh, topological data analysis. Um, so the aim is twofold. One, um, I would like to introduce to you the topological point of view uh, that we adopt on geometry as topologists. Um, so um, for a topologist, everything is deformable. You can twist, you can bend everything. So at the end of this course, you will know that a circle is the same thing as a square and, and a donut is the same thing as a, a mug. And uh, thanks to this point of view, we will adopt, uh, um, we will develop new methods to analyze data. And uh, topological data analysis, this is a very young theory. It has uh, something like 20 years, 20 years old. But it has been used in, in many contexts, such as medicine, uh, chemistry, uh, analysis of images, and, and um, that's what also we, we will learn. Um, so a few words about me. Uh, I'm a doctor um, uh, specialized in uh, topological data analysis, and that's why uh, Cesar uh, hired me at FGV, where I will stay for two or three years. Uh, so this is Paris. And these are the institutes where I worked. Um, so this is uh, a contract. Isso é um contrato entre vocês e mim, eu. So that the course will go uh, nice and smooth because uh, we will see a lot of things. So the most important is that you can interrupt me anytime you want during the lesson, because uh, I do not speak Portuguese uh, and I speak English with a very French accent. I guess you speak English with a Brazilian accent, so we may have some trouble communicating. Please interrupt me, uh, ask me to repeat or ask me anything. Uh, also, uh, I will be available by mail anytime, so you can just send me anything and I, and I will answer. Um, Oh, I think there is someone with the mic on. Thank you. Um, and the last thing you can do, uh, you can send me your homework because every day you will have homework for the next lesson. Okay. Um, and you can send, send it to me so I, I will collect them for you. Um, and the other side, what you cannot do, you cannot not do your homework um, because the course will be intense and uh, I want you to hold on and, and follow every lesson. Okay. And, oh, can you mute your mic, please? Thank you. And again, please don't, don't be afraid of interrupting me. And so if you follow these rules, I will follow this one. I will be available anytime during the next three weeks for your questions. And I promise to give you interesting and understandable uh, classes. Okay. 
Um, so this will be the, the schedule of uh, the class. Every information you need will be on this website. So let, let, let me show it to you. Um, I hope you can see my screen. Um, if you go on my webpage, uh, Rafael Tnaraj at GitHub at EO, that EO, go in the teaching section and then in uh, MAP, summer course, topological data analysis. And you will find everything you need here. The notes. Uh, so for every lesson, I will write some notes. So for instance, here, you have notes for the first four lessons, okay? And uh, you will find illustration and uh, exercise and the homeworks you will have to do. Okay. Professor? Yeah? Uh, is there any reference book that you're gonna be following or that we can take a look about topological data analysis? Yeah. Or topology, for yeah. that matter? Yeah, I will um, say a few words about that at the end, uh, in a few minutes. Okay, sorry, thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, you can also find uh, all the slides if you uh, it may be easier to, to follow the, the class. Okay, and so uh, the course will be divided in three weeks. The first week is about general topology. So um, I've heard that uh, not all of you are uh, familiar with topology. So we will start from the very beginning. Um, so at the end of this week, uh, you will understand what is a topological space, what are uh, homeomorphisms, homotopies, and simplicial complexes. The second week will be about homology, which is uh, algebraic topology. And at last, we will uh, do persistent homology, which is the main tool uh, of topological data analysis. Um, and uh, as you can see, there is four, uh, three tutorials here, Python tutorial. So we will code also in Python. Okay. Um, so I divided, I, I classified the lessons in a degree of abstractness. Um, oh. Someone is saying that the, cur the, cur the red dot is distant from the cursor. I hope it is better now. Um, the first uh, lesson today, topological space, will be one of the most uh, abstract and, and, and uh, opaque uh, course. So I count on you to hold on, um, and then it will go better. Okay, a word about coding. Uh, we will code in Python, and to do persistent homology, we will use the Goody library, okay? We will also use uh, Jupyter Notebook, it will be easier to communicate, and uh, Network X. So please, before the first uh, tutorial, which will be um, uh, at the end of the week, download these libraries. And if you do, you should be able to run uh, this notebook here. So please, uh, before the end of the week, be able to run this notebook. All right. Um, a few references. So here you can find the notes of the course. For those who are uh, interested in uh, algebraic topology, there is the best book in the world, uh, which is free and available on the net. It is a book uh, of Hatcher, Alan Hatcher. It is called uh, Algebraic Topology. You can follow this link. Um, it goes very far in the theory, so even if you only read the first pages, you will learn a, a lot. And if you want to learn more about the Goody library to do persistent homology, you can follow this link. Okay, if you need more uh, precise uh, references, uh, ask me and I will find some. All right. So this will be uh, your first homework. So please uh, uh, do it before tomorrow. Uh, your first exercise is to send me an email at my address answering the following question. So we will be, okay. 
uh, if you understand when I speak, when I speak English, uh, do you know about topology? Do you know how to code um, in Python in particular? And last, uh, if you have any remark, uh, anything to say about you, uh, just just go. Okay, so this is it for the introduction. If there is any no question, we can go to the first lesson. Can you use the chat to ask questions? Yeah, yeah. The chat is open on my laptop, so you can use it. Okay, thank you. And if I if I don't see the question uh, right away, just uh, open your mic and, and say that there is a question in the chat. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go. Um, the first course will be about topological spaces. This is the main, the most basic notion we have in topology. And in order to introduce topological spaces, uh, I wrote here uh, this definition of a continuous map because topology allows to define the notion of continuity. Basically, topology is the, the theory of continuity. And uh, so this is a usual definition of a continuous map between uh, R, right, um, that we learn in the first years of uh, your studies. Uh, could you uh, tell me in the chat, everyone, if you've already seen this definition? If you remember of or not. Ah, very good. Seems like, seems like everyone knows it. Okay. So um, this definition uh, is very good, but it is only suited to deal with maps uh, between R and R. Uh, but in topology, we want to to uh, talk about maps between more general spaces that only R and R. For instance, we like to study maps between cubes, between uh, the torus and, and a sphere or uh, any shape. And you cannot use this definition as it is, okay? So to define continuity in great generality, we have to define first topological spaces. Um, then we will study um, the most important uh, topological space in this uh, course, which is Rn. And at the end, we will be able to define continuous maps in, in general. So first, topological spaces. Um, so this is a very abstract notion that would make sense with some time. A topological space is a pair xt, where x is any set, and t is a set of subsets of x. Okay, And what you ask for t is that, first, the empty set belongs to t, and the whole set x also belongs to t. And moreover, we have two more axioms. If you take any collection of subsets of T, then the union of all these subsets must belong to T. Third axiom, if you take a finite collection of, set of elements of T, uh, the intersection must be also in T. Okay? The set T is called a topology on X. 
and the elements of T are called open sets. So uh, a topological space is simply saying what are the open sets of the set X. And these open sets must satisfy these three axioms. So if I use the terminology of open sets, the first axiom says that the empty set is an open set and X is an open set. The second axiom says that the infinite union of open sets is an open set. And last, a finite intersection of open sets is an open set. Okay. Let me give you an example. So here is the definition. I consider a very simple uh, base set X, the set that contains two elements, zero and one. Um, I hear some noise. Um, so let's define topologies on, 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 on X, a topology, so is a set of subsets of X. Here is the most simple one. T1, the topology T1, is a topology that contains the empty set and the whole set, X. Um, note that because of the first axiom, this is the most simple topology we can um, define on X because the empty set and the whole set must be in the topology. We could also define T2, this other topology, when I say that zero, the set that contains only the element zero, is an open set. And I could say that one, the set that contains one is an open set, or uh, T4, uh, this is a topology also. So we like to draw uh, something like that, you draw your set X. So there is two elements, two dots, zero and one. And the first topology is the topology that contains as an open set, simply the pair zero one. So I draw a, a circle around zero and one. The topology T2 contains the open set zero. Uh, Raphael. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, just a question. Uh, these lines are based on the notes, so, so we don't have to take notes, or we should take notes while seeing the slides? Um, everything I will say will be in the notes. And uh, in the notes, there is even more than I will say today. But I think it's better for you to write a little bit on, on, your, on your book. Ah, OK, thanks. Um, there, yeah, everything that are on the slide already are uh, on the on the notes, the PDF notes. And yeah, the slides are available uh, on the website. Um, T4, the last uh, topology I defined, it contains the set, the single tone 0, 1, and 0, 1. So I draw circles around 0, 1, and around 0, 1. OK, let's take a bit more complicated example. Take X as a set that contains three elements, 0, 1, and 2. This T is a topology on X. This means that this set satisfy, satisfies these three axioms. These other uh, topologies are not topologies. So for instance, the first one, T1, is the set that contains the empty set and the set zero. Can someone tell me why this is not a topology on X? Because it doesn't have all the elements. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The whole set X is not in, in, in T1. This is uh, this proper set is missing. This one. Why is it not a topology on, on, on X? The set is zero one, one is not. Is not. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's it. The union of the set zero and the set one. This is the set zero one is not in the topology, so it does not work. And the last one. The set one. 
yeah. intersection. Exactly. The intersection of 0, 1, and 0, 2 is 1, and 1 is not in T3. All right. Um, so this will be the, your first examples of, of topologies. Um, in the notes, there is a, an exercise, a facultative exercise, uh, which asks how many topologies there exist on X with three elements. Um, so this is a bit of a boring exercise because you have to basically list of the possibilities and see whether they satisfy these axioms. And on X, there exists, I think, something like 29 topologies. Well, once you have open sets, you can define the closed sets. This is really simple. If you take a uh, an open set, so you consider any topological space, uh, a set X and a topology T on X, you take an open set, its complement is called a closed set. Uh, so its complement is defined as the set of elements of X that are not in O. And uh, any actually any set, any subset of X, according to this definition, is closed if its complement is open. Um, so for instance, here, if I take uh, the topology T, uh, zero is open, so its complement, one, two, is closed. OK. Um, and if you use the definition of uh, a topology, you can uh, derive this uh, proposition about closed sets. The sets, empty sets, and X are closed. Um, so you can prove this. To show that the empty set is closed, you have to show that its complement is open. But the complement of the empty set is the whole set, x. x is open. Remember that this was the first axiom of a topological space. x is open. So its complement, the empty set, is closed. And this is really the same to prove that the whole set X also is closed because its complement is the empty set, which is open. Okay. We have uh, another property. If you take an infinite collection of closed sets, then their intersection also is closed. So to prove this, we will take an infinite collection of closed sets. And we want to show that this intersection is closed. Let me take the complement of this. The complement of the intersection of sets is equal, you can prove this, to the union of the complements of the sets. Now, the complement of the, the sets P alpha are open because the P alpha are closed. So this is a union of open sets. And remember the second axiom, a union of closed sets, uh, of open sets is open. So this thing is open and its complement is closed. So we proved that uh, this intersection is closed. Same for the last uh, property take a finite collection of closed sets, their union, union is also a closed set. Uh, same strategy, I take the complement of the union, it is equal to the intersection of the complements. But the, complement, the, the complements are open, and the intersection of open sets is open uh, because of the third axiom of uh, a, a topology. Um, this works because there is only a finite collection of uh, open sets, right? Um, so yeah, this thing is an open set, so its complement is closed. And we prove that a union of closed sets, a finite union of closed sets is closed. 
All right. So this is it for um, the definition of uh, topologies via open sets, and then we define closed sets. Now this is where it gets interesting. We'll define a topology on Rn. So defining a topology on Rn means defining open sets. Um, there is a, a lot of ways uh, to defining topologies on Rn, but we want uh, um, a natural, uh, useful topology. Um, and to do so, we have to go through the, uh, the usual Euclidean metric on Rn. So a point of Rn, this is a, a tuple, a n tuple of uh, real numbers. And on Rn, you know that there is a, a metric, the Euclidean metric, which is defined as the square root of the sum of the squares of the coordinates of x. Uh, we will call also this the Euclidean norm of, of x. And now we will define balls. Take a point of Rn, x, and a radius, r, uh, a positive uh, real number. I defined the open ball, bxr, as the set of elements of Rn, such that the distance, the metric, the norm of x minus y, is lower than r. So you may have already seen this definition. Um, it's very important to do topology, even metric topology. Um, some examples in r. So r, I represent r with the real line here. Uh, the ball b1, 0 0.9. So this is the ball with center 1, and radius 0, 9, it looks like that. This is a, an interval. Okay. If you are in uh, R2, uh, so um, the ball with center 0, 0 0.5 and radius 0, 3 is, looks like that. Okay. And the last example in, in R3, in, in dimension 3, um, so a point in R3 has three coordinates. For instance, I, I, I pick this one here to illustrate. And uh, you have a ball here with center x and radius 0 0.2. All right. So this is um, the definition just uh, as before. And you can uh, do a lot of things with uh, balls. Um, you can do a lot of metric uh, geometry. And uh, a property we will need a lot uh, is the following. Uh, take any ball of uh, Rn, so you specify a center and a radius, and take any point in this ball, y. So for instance, this big ball will be the ball around x, and this will be any point in it. Consider the ball centered around y with radius r minus the distance between x and y. So r at the beginning was the radius of the ball around x. And I consider a new ball around y with this radius. Okay. And the proposition states that this ball here is included in the bigger ball. The ball around y with this radius is a subset of the largest ball around x. So that's a fact. Let us prove this. Um, I write here the definition of the ball around x and the ball around y. For instance, the ball around y with radius r, mi r minus x minus y. This is a set of points of Rn, such that the distance between this point z and the center of the ball, y, is lower than the radius, r minus the norm. So let's take a point in this ball, z, 
I take any point in this small ball z. And uh, I want to show that z is also in the largest ball. Okay. So according to the definition of a ball, I just have to show that um, the distance between x and z is lower than r. And how do we do that? We use the triangle inequality. This is very classic. x minus z, this is lower than x minus y plus y minus z. Now, if I use the definition of the ball around y, since z is included in this ball, is an element of this ball, the norm y minus z is lower than the radius of the ball. So this sum is lower than this one. And you see that the distances cancel and we end up with r. So we have shown that the point z is at distance at most, at most r from x. This means that z is an element of the ball around x and with radius r. Um, so I, I don't know if this was uh, easy for you or uh, a bit difficult. Easy? OK. OK, very nice. So there is um, uh, an exercise we will have to do for homework, which looks la 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 like that. OK. And now we can define topology on Rn. I have to define what is an open set in Rn. So let's take any subset of Rn and consider um, an element x of the subset. I draw A here. First definition, we say that the set A is open around x if there exists a ball around x that is included in A. For instance, if uh, x would be this point, we say that A is open around x if I can find a ball centered around x that is included in A. Okay, And we say that A is open if it is open around every point. So for instance, if I pick a point here, I must find a ball that is centered around this point and included in A. For instance, here, I can choose this ball. Another example here, OK, I can, I can choose this, this ball here. This is an open set, OK? And I will define on Rn a topology, the Euclidean topology, it is defined as the collection of all such open sets. And uh, we must prove something here. Define like that, this topology is act uh, an actual topology on Rn. What does that mean? Uh, that this collection of open sets satisfies the three axioms of a topological space. And the three axioms being, remember, uh, these ones. Okay. So let's prove that. The first axiom is uh, most simple. We have to show that the empty set and uh, the set X are open sets. So X here is Rn. The whole set is Rn. Uh, how can we show that the empty set is open? Is it open around every point uh, in the empty set? There is no point in the empty set. So there is nothing to prove, right? The empty set is open because it does not contain any point. And the whole set, X, Rn, is open. And this is really simple because you take any point of Rn, choose any ball around this point, the ball is a, a subset of Rn. This is obvious because the ball is defined as a subset of Rn. So for instance, here I pick the ball with 
center x and radius one. Yeah. So uh, we proved the first axiom. Let's prove the second axiom. An infinite union of open sets is an open set. So let's take an infinite union, uh, an infinite collection of open sets and define their union. O. O is a union of all the O alpha. Uh, we, will, we have to show that O is open around any point that is, for instance, open around X, pick, pick, a, pick a X, um, and show that there exists a ball centered around X that is included in O. Um, but if we take a point X in O, in this union, this means that there, is, there exists uh, a set, O alpha, that contains X. This is by definition of the union of sets. O alpha is open. So uh, we can find a ball centered around X that is contained in O alpha. But if O alpha contains a ball around X, the union also contains a ball around X. So we prove that O is opened, open around X. And this is true for every X in O, so O is open, according to the definition of the Euclidean topology on the ring. OK. Third axiom, uh, a, a little bit trickier. We have to take care of what we say. Um, we consider a finite intersection of open sets. So um, take an element X in the intersection. We want to show that O is open around X. By definition of the intersection, X is contained in every uh, open set OI. And for every open set OI, there exists a ball centered around X that is a subset of OI. But these op uh, open balls, may, these balls may be different. The ready, the ready A um, may differ. So I denote RI the radius of an open ball around X that is contained in OI. And now, uh, because we have only a finite number of open sets, we can consider the minimum of all the ready. So this minimum is uh, non-zero. It is greater than zero. And moreover, the ball with center X and radius R minimal is a, a subset of the OI for every I because we only consider a smaller ball. But if this ball is a subset of all the OI, it is also a subset of the intersection. So this ball, Bx R min, is a subset of O. So O is open around X. And this is true for any X in O, so O is open. Okay. If you have any doubt, uh, interrupt me. So somebody is asking in the definition is better if there exists R instead of epsilon. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Sorry, this is a mistake. Uh, we say that A is open if there exists R, such that the ball is open. Some people prefer to use epsilon, I prefer R, because it's like radius. Thank you. OK, um, let's take the example of R, R1, R to the 1, the real line, the most simple um, Euclidean space. Uh, a proposition in, uh, okay, this is a, a proposition about all topology, all Euclidean spaces to, to start. 
the open balls are open sets. The balls, big R, as they have been defined a few slides ago, are open sets. Um, this is not obvious that the, op that the balls are open sets. You have to prove something. But this is, this is easy. You can, you can do it. Um, and in the case of R, an open ball, as we've seen, is an interval. Okay. Um, so the intervals A, B are open sets. This is something, something uh, uh, which is a, a consequence of, of, um, of this. Um, a very important remark here. The ball, the, the, the ball, uh, the open ball does not contain its boundary, does not contain the extremities of the interval. Okay. When I say that AB is an open set, I do not put A and B in the interval. Okay. This is an open interval. Um, so let me illustrate that. In R, I consider the following set. And I ask you, are they open or are they closed? I will do the first one myself. Zero one, the interval, the closed interval zero one is not an open set. Because if you go uh, to the boundary, if you take, for instance, uh, zero, you cannot find a ball that will be included in uh, zero one. See if I take any R, the ball around zero and radius R uh, will have some elements that are lower, that are negative, lower than zero. So we don't have a ball around zero. So zero one is not open. Uh, yeah, not open. But it is closed. It is closed because uh, its complement is open. The complement of zero one is the union of minus infinity zero and one plus infinity, where everything is open. Okay, so this is a union of two open sets. So this is an, uh, an open set. The complement of zero one is an open set. So zero one closed is closed. Okay. Um, what can you say about the second example? It is open only on one end. Yeah. So, so is it is it globally open? No. 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 Um, thank you. It is not open. Uh, Guillermo says that it is not open. Is it closed? No. Why not? Mm -hmm. Lucas, can you explain a little bit more? How can we prove that it is not closed? Take the complement. Yeah. And what do you have? It's not open. Yeah, it is not open. And uh, as you can read in the chat, uh, Guillermo says that its complement contains one infinity with one included, and this is not open. Exactly. Um, so this is what is written here. Um, that's okay, Lucas, if you talk in the chat, it's fine. All right, uh, minus infinity one. Uh, well, you, you understood what happens. It, it is open because it's an interval. I said that open interval are open. And it is not closed because its complement is one plus infinity with one included in it. And so this is not open around one. So the complement is not an open set, and uh, the initial set is not closed. 
What about uh, the singletons at x? Take any x and consider the set that only contains x. Is it open or is it closed or neither? OK, closed. Um, how do you prove that, Barry? Davy? You can take the components also. It's going to be the union of two intervals that are open. Yeah, exactly. Same, same thing as before. Thank you very much. So the single tones uh, are not open, but they are closed. All right. Uh, the last example is the rational numbers, Q. Uh, this is a set which is neither open or closed. Um, and I would like you to meditate a little bit on that um, because it's very interesting to, to show that it is not closed and not open, but we won't do that uh, today. OK, so let's go on. Third part, topology of subsets of Rn. Because um, we defined a, a topology on Rn, the Euclidean space. But as I said in the introduction, we would like to consider uh, subsets of Rn, such as the circle, the sphere, the cube, um, and what happens is that every subset of Rn can be endowed with a topology. You can put the topology of Rn onto its subsets. And this is called the subspace topology. So follow me. Take any topological space. We will define that in, in generality. Take a topological space, Xt. OK, X is a set. T is a topology and consider a subset of X. Y. I define a topology on Y. It is called the subspace topology. And it is defined as follow. T Y is the set of intersections between Y and any open set of X. And so I say that this is a topology, and we will prove it. We have to check the three axioms, just as before. Um, can we prove that uh, Ty is a topology? First axiom, um, can we prove that the empty set belongs to Ty? This is true, because if you take O to be the empty set, the empty set intersection y is the empty set. But the empty, the empty set intersection y is an element of Ty by definition. So the empty set is an open set for Ty. Okay. This is really simple, right? Um, the set y also, the whole set is open because uh, you have to choose a, a nice uh, open set O. Take uh, X, for instance. X is open in T. So X intersection Y is open in TY. But X intersection Y is Y. So Y also is open. OK? This was the first axiom. Second axiom, infinite union. Let me take an infinite collection of open sets in Ty. I denote their union O. Um, and I want to show that O is an open, an open set for Ty. But what we know is that for every open set O alpha, um, it can be written as the intersection between Y and a set O prime alpha, the set O prime alpha being 
an element of the topology on X. O prime alpha is an open set for X. This is by definition of Ty. Now consider the auxiliary set O prime defined as the union of all the O prime alpha. This is a union of open sets of X. So this is an open set of X, or I should say T, the topology on X. Um, now we can write a simple equation. O, I said that it is a union of O alpha, but each O alpha is equal to the intersection between O prime alpha and Y. And now uh, you can prove this is elementary uh, set uh, calculus that a union of intersection is equal to the union to the intersection with the union. You can put the y outside, okay? But the union of O alpha prime is O prime, and I said that O prime is an open set for T. So O prime intersection y is an open set for Ty by definition. And that's it. Um, yeah, so let's do the third axiom very quickly because this is exactly the same. I take a finite collection of, oh, there is a mistake here. Uh, consider a finite collection of uh, open sets of Ty, not of uh, Trn. Um, there is no Rn here, this is whole general. Uh, so you define the intersection of all the, the open sets of Ty. You want to show that they are, so this is open. You write every open set as the intersection between an open set of X and Y. And uh, so this is the same equation as before, but you replace the union with the intersection. Okay, so this was before. And this is now, you can write that this intersection is the intersection between um, an open set of X and Y. And we have proven that this finite intersection also is an open set for TY. Okay, and this is it for the proof. Let me uh, state this definition in, in other words. If you have a topological space, so a set and a topology on it, and a subspace that is interesting for you, um, you can uh, endo this subset with the topology of the ambient space, okay? And for instance, all the shapes that you like and that are included in Euclidean spaces now can be endowed with a topology. For instance, the circle. So the circle, um, which is called a sphere in, in generality, uh, is defined as a set of points of Rn that are uh, at distance at most, uh, at distance one from the origin. This is a subset of the plane and the Euclidean plane has a topology, the Euclidean topology, and you can consider the subspace topology on the circle, okay? Um, there exists a, a collection of subsets of the circle that are open sets and that define a, a topology. Um, during this course, uh, this is what we will mainly do. Uh, we will consider subsets of the Euclidean spaces and we will undo these subsets with the subspace topology. Um, let me introduce some uh, other um, uh, subsets that we will consider. Um, the cube or the square. The square in Rn is defined as 
the sets of points such that the uh, maximal uh, value of the absolute value of its coordinates is one. Um, okay, and this is exactly what you think it is. Uh, in the plane, it's a square. In the space, it's a cube. In the in R four, it's a hypercube, and so on. Uh, the open balls, so we defined them before, um, but we also have the closed balls. The closed balls are uh, like the open balls, but you allow the points on the boundary. This is a closed ball. You also take the points that are at distance r from the center. Okay. Um, and uh, last subspace, which, which will be very interesting for us, uh, the standard simplex uh, delta. So here, here is its definition. Um, and for instance, this interval here is a subset of the plane. This is delta 2, the simplex uh, delta uh, uh, 2 minus 1, sorry. Uh, we will talk a, a lot about it uh, at the end of the week when we will define simply short complexes. OK. Um, this is it for uh, topological spaces. We will now define continuous maps, as I promised. Are there any questions until here? OK, thank you. Let's talk about continuity. Um, so continuity is a notion of maps of uh, functions. So uh, in this uh, last section, we will consider two topological spaces, the domain of the map and the codomain. OK, I consider x t, the first topological space, and y u. U is a topology on Y, OK? And I consider a map between X and Y, the function. I say that this map is continuous if for every open set of U, every open set in Y, the pre-image F uh, exponent minus 1 of O is an open set of t of x, um, the pre-image being uh, the set of points of x, such that their image is in O. Okay. Uh, in other words, a map this map f is continuous if the pre-image of any open set here is an open set here. Um, this is a uh, a very, very simple definition, um, but this is all we need. What you can prove uh, is that this definition is equivalent to this one. A map is continuous if the pre-image of closed sets are closed sets. Okay. So from now on, when we will talk about a continuous map, we will mean a map such that the pre-image of open sets are open sets. And as a consequence, the pre-image of closed sets are closed sets. OK? Um, let me give you an example. This map here, which is 0 for the negative values on R, and um, 1 for the positive reals. This map F is a map between the topological spaces R and R that I endow with the Euclidean topology. I want to show that this map is not continuous. Uh, to do so, I have to find, for instance, a close, an open set such that its pre-image is not open. That would mean that the map is not continuous. Or 
I could find a closed set such that its preimage is not closed. And this is what we will do. Consider the set zero. This is a subset of R, and we have seen that it is uh, a closed set, right? Because its uh, complement is an open set. The preimage of zero is minus infinity zero closed. Um, oh, th there is there is a, a mistake here. Uh, I should have defined f. Okay, we will do something else. Uh, consider I will write in the chat. Consider the sets one. Yeah, yeah Lucas, uh, you're right. Let us consider the set one. Okay, it's pre image is zero plus infinity. The sets of points that are mapped to one is uh, zero plus infinity. And zero plus infinity, as you can see in the chat, this is not a closed set. So the image of this closed set is not a closed set. So this map F is not continuous. You could try to do this with uh, different uh, sets than one or. Um, so, okay, th this uh, looks like the usual definition uh, you, you already have about continuity rights, because uh, according to what you knew about continuity, this map was not continuous. Uh, the interest of this definition here I, uh, I use is that one, you can define continuity between general topological spaces and the, and two, it is so simple that you can have very simple proofs of statements. So for instance, here I state that the composition of continuous maps is continuous. That is, I have three topological spaces, X, Y, and Z. And two maps, F between X and Y, and G between Y and Z. I, I, I consider that they are continuous. The composition, G circle F, so this is a, a map which is defined like that. It's a map between X and Z, and it is continuous. This is a, a statement, okay? Let us prove that. We just have to show that um, the preimage of open sets are open sets. Okay. Let's take an open set of Z here. We have to show that the preimage by G circ F is an open set. But we can write the preimage by the composition as the preimage of, of O by G. And they actually take the preimage by F, okay? But the preimage of O by G is an open set because uh, G is continuous. And the preimage by F of an open set also is an open set because F is continuous. So this preimage of preimage is an open set. And we prove that uh, G uh, F is continuous. Okay. All right. Um, sorry for uh, all of this. So I was talking about um, the link between our new definition of continuity and uh, the old definitions that you've already learned. And I want to show that being uh, continuous for a new definition implies that uh, it is also continuous for the old definition. 
So uh, I don't know if you heard me when, when, when I said that, but um, we start by uh, taking a map, a continuous map between Rn and Rm, where we undo these spaces with uh, the Euclidean topology. I take any epsilon and I take any x in Rn. Okay? So now follow me. I consider a ball in Rm, the codomain, uh, the ball centered around f of x and with radius epsilon. This ball is an open set. So we can apply the definition of the continuity of f. We get that the pre-image of this ball is also an open set in Rm, Rn. Okay. But uh, this uh, open set contains the point X. So this open set is open around X. This is um, what is written here. We can uh, translate this statement. Being open around X means that we can find a ball centered around X, uh, which is included in the open set, okay? There exists eta, such that bx eta is a subset of this. But this statement is equivalent to this one. For all elements in the, this ball, the image is in this one. This really is just another way of saying that. Okay, and now we can write things differently. For all y in the ball, that means that for all y uh, with distance at most eta from x, we have that f of y is included in the ball centered around f of x and with radius epsilon. In other words, the distance between f of x and f of y is lower than epsilon, okay? And this definition here is the definition I, 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 I stated uh, at the very beginning. Let me write uh, the proposition. A map between the Euclidean spaces is continuous if and only if we have uh, this formula for every x and epsilon, there is eta, such that uh, being closed at the beginning means being closed at the end. All right, and, and the important remark here is that our definition of continuity, our new definition, uh, englobes, contains the older, your older definition of continuity. So what you already know uh, still applies. For instance, the sinus function uh, is continuous. The sum of continuous maps, um, the composition, uh, as we've seen. Okay. Um, so this is uh, the end of the lesson. Um, so we I, I introduced today the general notion of continuity based on topological spaces. And uh, as we will see in the, in the next days, this more general notion of uh, continuity and topology will allow us to uh, define uh, very useful and general concepts uh, um, that will help us to do, to do, to do topology. Okay. And uh, the homework for tomorrow are the exercise four and five in the notes. Um, and I also propose a facultative exercise if you want to work more, exercise two and seven. Um, obrigado, everyone.